Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to. Oh, uh, mom, this is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. The ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, mom. You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. And welcome to the Sonic Society, the world's longest running, most incredible showcase of modern audio drama. I'm one of the conductors on this train ride to drama, Jack Ward, along here with the engineer with the smartest cap, David Alt. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, I hope spring has continued to uh, make itself known over there. We've had a mix, as we usually do. (laughs) Some days it's warm, some days it's cold, some days it's freezing, some days it's hot. It's like like when we exported our people over there, we exported our weather as well. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. We have some hot-headed people, some cool-headed people. (laughs) Whatever your destination, we've got all the best ways to get there on the society here on the Mutual Audio Network. Now, celebrating our third season i didn't have time to say that last mm. week for some reasons so. <laughs> uh yes and we are just as tightly packed this week as our features come from juan nasita with some light romantic fare with two episodes of dates followed by british love and franco and rachel and they all begin right here on the sonic society <laughs> You have the worst smile in the history of mankind. (laughs) It's very terrifying. Well, that's charming, but you're meant to be trying to win a second date, not insulting me. Can you teach it to me? I have a 17-year-old sister who talks to me about boys. I'd very much like to scare her off. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, your smile is captivating. Every time you do it, I feel like I'm floating. (laughs) Well, you're floating towards love. Or something resembling a train wreck. (laughs) Let's hope it's not that. Yeah, let's do that. So, how does it feel to laugh with someone you connect with? (laughs) Magical, I bet. Well, I don't know. I should ask the guy behind you. The back of his head is riveting. My ex used to think I was funny. (laughs) To look at or to laugh at. Both responses seem like the truth of your point. (laughs) I do. I fucking like you. Oh. Well, I should say I like you back. (laughs) Um, well, why aren't you? I saw a movie once where a character took off their mask and they looked hideous. You're making zero sense right now. I'm clearly waiting for you to take off your mask and show me that you're beautiful. Duh. That is not how you speak to a lady. Behave yourself or this doesn't happen again. Understood? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Thanks for taking me out. Although, when we drove to this neighborhood, I thought you wanted to rob me. Yeah, I don't really know what I was thinking by taking you here. Oh, wait, I know. I wanted you to think I was rough and tough, dashing with a hint of bad boy in me. And it's failed, hasn't it? (laughs) Yeah, I reckon so. Quite tragically. Well, in truth, I got blackmailed into it. I owed some people money, and I need to repay them. So, here I am, on this very terrible, terrible date. (laughs) My ex used to be a gambler. And way to bring down my mood. I'm kidding. Are you happy? You know, right now. Oh, did my tears say something different? I'm glad. (laughs) No, no, the answer is, they freaking did. (laughs) (laughs) What made 
did you ask me out? Last week, we were back in the office and our boss... Jared the D-word? The man who slept with me and never called me back? What? You're such an easy mark. <laughs> anyway, don't you remember him putting a bunch of paperwork on my desk and you asking me if I wanted help and me putting them on your desk and then going home? <laughs> you think I go to work to remember things, don't you? Dude, know your woman. I don't want to. Is that when you knew I was... A picnic to walk over? Yep, that was the moment. <laughs> I've been walking all over you ever since. And I'm proud of that fact. <laughs> oh, you're repugnant. But thank you anyway. Yes, that's the moment I realized you could be the one. Well, don't take that literal. Night's still young, and you could turn out to be the B word. Oh, well, you're a D word. But I like that you don't say the actual word. Well, not by choice. It's a family rule set by Grandma. We weren't allowed to swear. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Where'd you grow up? Here? Yep, here. I never left. There's a man over there having a dump, and you've never wanted to leave. <laughs> Gross! And I take it back. I want to leave this place. Where would you like to go? I've always fancied Paris. I studied in Paris. I could show you around. There's only one downside. My French is atrocious. I mean, as bad as your jokes are, <laughs> that lousy. <laughs> Stop it! I mean it. Let me be your tour guide. I guess that could work. I'm always looking for sad sacks to introduce me to the hot French man. Yeah, that won't be happening. <laughs> Logan, I really need that French dick. Take me to Diggyland Paris, Logan. And I've changed my mind about taking you there. <laughs> I'm fascinating like that. <laughs> <laughs> you look stunning, by the way. Well, thank you. I wanted to dress down for this. Who knew you'd go 20 steps further? If I was a hotter man, would you... Dress a billion dollars? Hell yeah. Ah, look at you trying to make me feel bad. <laughs> In actual fact, it's making me think you're a child. <laughs> Are you, um, close to your family? Mom and sisters, yeah. What about Dad? There's got to be some drama there, surely. Please say there is. Uh, let's get to the fifth date before bringing him up. It's a fragile subject. Yeah, you'd be lucky to get a second date, let alone a fifth date. And you'd be lucky to get sex tonight, let alone... Damn, I'm creepy here, aren't I? <laughs> In all seriousness, I could comprehend the fifth date. Really? You don't say. I'm literally the hottest guy in your world, and you, a woman I don't think is that attractive, believe she can envision the fifth date. You get better with time, right? You're like old wine, right? You mellow. I really wish I could say I do, but then you'd mock me. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm fascinating like that. Who knew? I could see myself J. Crew in your ass. And what does that translate to, you know, for folks who don't speak drivel? <laughs> I'm desperate to take you out shopping and, uh, buy you new clothes. Because the clothes I'm wearing aren't really dating attire, despite this sweater costing $300. You spent $300 on that sweater? Are you dumb? Are you standing there telling me with a silly look, yep, you're stupid. Ignore that enigma. How dare you mock? Uh, hang on. Nope, you're right. Please, continue shaming me. <laughs> In all seriousness, I buy all my clothes from thrift stores. This sweater costs $3.50. Oh, well, good. Then you'll be glad to know that all girls at work think you're a tramp. And I especially rally them to believe that. They do? Isn't it great when you don't give a fuck what others think? I love me. You know? Wait, did I think you were smart before this? Ignore me. I'm thinking out loud here. So, your hormones kicked in yet? Having sex dreams about us yet? <laughs> Correct. I have, but that was before this date. I've been slowly changing my mind throughout it. I'm fascinating like that. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Now, do you still think I'm not funny? Yeah, because you stole my line. Make up your own stuff. <laughs> well, I would, but nah. <laughs> well, this is a terrific date. I know. It won't get better, will it? I very much doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Date number two, and instead of being in a restaurant, I'm here on your porch, carrying a massive box filled with... Books, yes. Great. I can't wait for my hernia. Hey, you're the fool who offered to help me. You could have said no. I did say no. I had a tantrum over the phone. Oh yeah, like you're having one now? Oh, so you're not just about giving me a hernia, but you're also insulting me. <sighs> I know. Aren't I the best? I'm sorry I couldn't find another pushover to do this with. This relationship had better be worth it. It's a second date. I haven't made up that opinion yet. I'm not even sure if I ever will. Huh. Who knew? Stop stealing my lines. Mwah. Well, I can't promise to stop. I thought you said your brother was going to help us out with this. Oh, I did, didn't I? Yeah, I lied, Logan. You should get used to that quick. I do a lot of it. In fact, the first time we do the thing, I might say you're the best in bed. Why are women cruel to me about that? <laughs> I hope you're joking there. I'll keep you guessing. So, um, I saw you talking to Megan at work earlier. You laughed at her joke. And here it is, like a jet plane sweeping in. The jealous part of our dating life. Oh yeah, and uh, why'd you do it? Let's save some time. Just say, don't talk to Megan again, or I'll rip off your face. Jesus, I wasn't going to say that. Although, if it means it'll stop you from talking to her, and I'll say it more. Look, Megan's cute, but she's not more than you. You're like a cute turtle. Only human. And more annoying than a turtle. <laughs> oh, thank you. I really am. She asked me out on a date. Wait, seriously? Yep. She found out we were dating and thought I could use an upgrade. Uh, she's such a bitch. I mean, I really considered it. And then a yogurt fell in your lap, and I felt sorry about you and forgot. Now that you've reminded me, I might call Megan after all. Well, I really hope there's a joke element to that sentence. Mm, let me think it over. Nope, there isn't. I can't believe Megan. I told her before the first date we were going to date, and then she stabs me in the back. Well, gossipers tend to do that. I'm going to ask accounting to delay her wages this month. Fucking bitch. Hey, come on. Don't get angry. But if you insist on it, please use harsher words. <laughs> you weren't really tempted, were you? Have you not seen her IG account? Yeah, and on second thought, I'd be tempted too. Huh. Who knew? I wouldn't look anywhere else. They're my soulmate. I think I talk a lot of bullshit in my daily life, so... I might be doing that now. Who knows, but probably. <laughs> well, and I think you could be my soulmate too. Well, what would I need to do to win that status? You, you need to be Chance the Rapper? I'll book my plastic surgery later. Mm, you'd have to be very rich. Yeah, I'd have to rob a bank for that. So, I'll add that to my to-do list. And you'd have to not have the personality you have right now? I'll go to the army and come out being a douchebag. How's that sound? Mm, perfect. Mwah. <sighs> Th 
That was quick. And and you weren't rubbish? Huh. Who knew? I've never experienced that before. What a strange day today is. Yeah, I'm surprised too. I really wanted it to be terrible for you so you wouldn't date me again. At least, that was the hope. I need to rethink things. You know what surprised me the most? I still like you after this. I feel like I want to puke, but I like you. Oof, gross. This is fucked up. In a way, that makes me want to hit my head up against a wall. You had some interesting techniques. Hang on. Not interesting, just dating back to the time of the Neanderthals. You need an upgrade. I won't put up with that crap. Yeah, I noticed my technique. But I try to save the good stuff for women who really deserve me. <laughs> I thought you did, but then I realized you didn't at all. What a strange fucked up day. I'm shivering with so much hate right now. Yeah, I need to call a friend about this. This is an emergency for the cock division. <laughs> yeah, me too. We need a plan to tackle round two, or I might lose my curiosity in you. FYI, I'm very much hoping I do. You don't have to tell me. I really want to take up smoking now. Ah, that will be the pizza. Thank you, God. I need an escape badly. No more than me. I'll freaking get it. <laughs> no, no. This is my house. I'll get it. Well, I'm the one more desperate to distance myself from you, so let me. You know what? Let's flip a coin. I'm a card man. Well, I'm a card woman. Fine. We flip a card. Heads are for the front of the card, and tails are for the back. And the winner is me. Aha! <sighs> you might want to tuck away your... Ah, damn it! <laughs> I'll be back. Try not to look so sexy that we're forced into doing it again. Never speak of that act again. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure I don't. <laughs> Logan, we need to stop this. Control yourself. I agree. Leave, woman. Leave. <laughs> I keep looking at you, and I'm so grossed out by your face. It's like an alien's ours has landed on it. You're ugly. Well, how about you? I keep thinking, is Zoe insane? She's just had sex with me, but she still wants to hang out like we're pals. <laughs> Let's just agree that we're both very, very deranged. I know. Who knew? Second date and sex. I thought my mom taught me better than that. And I went to church last Sunday. I thought God taught me better too. We're both bad, bad people. I'm seeing hell running towards me in flames of fire. I see a house with picket fences. What? Are you freaking kidding me? What? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, woman? I don't know. I'm sorry. There's nothing I could do about it. I'm a strange woman. <laughs> Look, I've been thinking about it. And there's one thing we can do about it. Ah, do a Romeo and Juliet. Marry each other. Mm, I would insist on doing the Romeo and Juliet thing. Yeah, me too. I'm not thinking straight. It's all the drama of this thing between us. Well, we're stuck together, Logan. I know we haven't thought about that a lot, but we are. Seriously? But I hate us so much. <laughs> I do too, but I think this is the right kind of hate. But I think. I really don't know you well enough to be sure. I guess you're right. Boy, this is the greatest disaster in history. You think, jerk? Wait, this is weird, but... My heart keeps beating. And magical things are happening again. Yo, control yourself, dude. I'm trying. Maybe you shouldn't look at me. Mwah. You're ruining it, woman. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why? Why did you do that? Ah, great. Now we're going to have to make love again. <laughs> I'm not sure I can look you in the eye after all that. Well, I'm having mine removed. Should we hug? Let me chop off my arms first. You need to get better at the thing. And I'm scheduling you in for Kama Sutra and yoga classes. Great. Now how about turning you into a better girlfriend while I go through that process? <laughs> I'd love that. Just not anything else outside that. Do you understand me? Yep. Should we kiss goodbye? I'm scared it might lead to... Help! 
Ah! Oh! Uh, How the hell did we let that happen? It's you. You keep giving me that that look. Well, if you weren't good with something I can't process as of yet, but I'm sure I never will one day. I just need to leave, and things will be okay. Where are my clothes? Yeah, you won't find them until we... <laughs> okay, I was lying before. I really like doing this with you. Do you think I don't? Are you serious? I'm at ease with you, and your character, Logan. I can't get enough of you. And you are gorgeous. I've struggled with not wanting to give myself away to you, but whenever I look at you, I want to do it. You're amazing. Well, you are too. I want this to lead somewhere. And I think I do too. But we should be sure about this. Yeah, we shouldn't rush it. Definitely not like today. Uh, yeah, I agree. So, um, what do you want to do? Hmm. Hmm. I want us to go on more dates. And get to that magical five date. And then see if we're... Still keen? Move on to the next stage of our relationship. Can you do that? I really think I can. Cool. Cool. Now, do your magic, chump. Bud, why are you back there? Why do you think? To tap that British ass. To get that incredible British love back and watch your tone. I'm not in the mood. Oh, 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 someone's got their panties in a twist. I need you to focus, Dan. Hey, did I tell you about my sex with your sister? She's terrible, by the way. Ah, oh, buddy, that's great to hear. I'll be sure to text my sister so she dumps your ass and goes back to her ex. <laughs> well, that's comical. Please don't do that. I'm sorry. I need you to focus on the plan. <sighs> what am I doing again? Spinning that yarn for you to make her like you again when we all know she'll never do that. You go to church to take money out of the collection basket. You're good at lying to God, so this should be easy. That's right. I mean, I keep telling your mom that I want to marry your sister, and that's a million miles from the truth. Back to the plan. You're telling Scarlett why I had to leave and why I couldn't meet her at the hotel. And say it backfires. Because I want it to happen. How much am I allowed to find it funny? Bro, I'm counting on you. You made this mess in the first place. You shouldn't have told my mom that I was in London. Look, your sister would have told her anyway after you blocked her on Facebook. <laughs> Look, I had to. There's only so many pictures of you two kissing I can take. <laughs> Anyway, my mom wouldn't have cut me off and I wouldn't have spent three weeks away from Scarlet, the like of my life. You ain't reached the love avenue yet? And you have with my sister? Oh, oh. How do you think I got her in bed? <sighs> yep, I'm going to be looking for new friends when I come back to Texas. Look, I'm sorry for my actions, but you were acting with your dick and you needed saving from yourself. I had to be a butt. A bud doesn't nearly cost him the love of his life. He helps his relationship grow. He waters it by giving his friends advice. You talk shit to your girl like that, and I'll bet you'll lose her in an instant. Dan, don't make me head back there to kick your ass. You owe me, so pay up. 
<laughs> uh, I thought I was the funny one out of us. And then you say that, and I rethink my beliefs. Who helped you fight off bullies in the fourth grade? Yeah. In middle school, who got blamed for smoking weed on that school trip when in actuality, it was you that smoked it? I still ain't helping you. Who put in the right words for my sister when she wanted to dump your ass for that NBA ball player? You serious? No, but she'll get a baller one day and you'll need me to put in the right words for you. Although it probably wouldn't help make a difference. The point still stands, dumbass. All right, are you done? How am I meant to do all that if I hate your ass? Hmm? Answer me that, dumbass. You got me there. So you're helping? Yeah, yeah, fine. I'll tell Scarlet that your mom wanted to cut you off and you chose her money instead of Scarlet's love. Try again. I'll tell her you had a family emergency. Which family emergency? Your grandfather died. And? You left your phone at the airport so you couldn't call her. Thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page at last. It took you long enough. A question for you. Is this girl that stupid that you think she'll believe all this nonsense? <sighs> Spoke too soon. I mean, you had her work number, so why couldn't you? What, was she having ear surgery so you knew you couldn't reach her? She won't be bringing that up. Just stick to the script. Okay, geez, you need a fresh tampon? <sighs> Back on that, are we sure we're not underestimating her intelligence? I'll handle that when the problem arises. Wow. Think of this as a test run. Knock on Scarlet's door. Hi, baby. I'm back from the dead to run rings over you again. She slams the door and you knock on it. She opens it. Hi, sweetie. You're looking fine. She rams a kitchen tool into your lathe. You really are. I ain't finished, dummy. Scarlet pretends it was self-defense and you were trying to rob her. You come out of the coma and then get arrested. You spend three years in jail. You leave prison and you go back to America where you find out there's been a civil war in Texas and we're all dead. Oh, are you done? You spend all your life knowing you should have listened to your good pal, Dan, a man who just wanted to protect you, but you ignored him because he was handsome brainy and utterly angel-like. How the hell are we friends? So where does Mama June think you even are? I told her I was in LA for a work trip. Is that why you showed her fake email? Dude, you're a pro liar. Teach it to me so I can lie to your sister. Just worry about sticking to the plan. Did you sleep together last time you saw her? And how terrible was she? Bro, you're sick and I'm ignoring you. I don't got time for that. Is that a no? You couldn't get it to rise, huh? You're sick and I'm still ignoring you. I've pressed her doorbell and I'm putting you on speaker. Ugh. Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain. You had the chance to for three weeks. I know, I know, but I had to deal with some stuff back home. It was some important stuff. Important stuff. You managed to do your work and send them to me, but the idea of picking up the phone to have a ten minute chat was impossible for you? Oh, oh, damn, she's got you there, son. And I like her. Hey, Scarlet, it's Dan. I just want to say I really appreciate you more than Mark. Uh, thanks. And who are you? Oh, and, and would you date me instead of this moron? Oh, with pleasure. I'll book my flats. I hope you're both kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Scarlet, uh, this is Dan, my soon-to-be ex-friend, if he continues to irritate me. <clears throat> Daniel, it's okay. You could be my new soulmate instead. All I heard was you saying I was once your soulmate, so <sighs> that makes me happy. Ugh, just tell me why you're here. Oh, well, uh, he wants to win back your love, and I'd like you to ignore him and arrange a Skype date for us later. How do you feel about being naked during the date? Dan, the moment's passed, so move on. Thank you, dear. So, you're here to win back a love I didn't have for him in the first place. 
Is that correct? I'll say yes. So, how will you win it back? By inventing lies? I think she stumped you, buddy. Look, look. I fucked up, I know, but my gramps died. Really? Yeah, he sure did. He came back for the funeral. It was an acid accident. A heart attack. Oh, right, right. I really need to focus more when you feed me lies to tell your girl. <sighs> Do you two need time to get your stories straight? How about I put my fingers in my ears? Would that help? Just tell her the truth. Or I will. You know you're going to mess up your life even more. Shut up, Dan. <sighs> Please, t tell me the truth, Dan. I don't know. It's a little X-rated and has a lot of embarrassing sex stories. Basically, he's a Me Too version of a bloke. What? I think I went too far. Uh, Mark's not actually that. Apologies. Look, we should just go in and talk instead of listening to this jackass. He's thinking up a lie. Are you? No. He's still looking for what? <sighs> Look, my mom found out I was in England. Is that true? So far. I'm hanging up. If he does... He lied to you. I need to be part of this. I'm his moral compass. You're more like a massive pain in the ass. Or that. <laughs> I love my job. You're not hanging up, Mark. Look, my family is wealthy, and they've always wanted me to marry a girl from a respectable family. Wait, isn't that the plot for Big Sick? <sighs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, I won't lie again. <sighs> All I want from you is the truth. So, please... Don't blow it. Okay. So, my mom found out I was in London chasing you, and she disapproved. She forced me to come home, and I went home to prove to her how much you meant to me. I had to do it. I love this mom. It's so entertaining. Can I hang up now? No. <laughs> my mom was going to cut me off if I stayed in London. So... Instead of fighting for me, you fought for her money? Okay, woohoo. I have to chime in here. Mark did really go home to prove to his mom how much she meant to him. How do I know if you're honest? Oh, he's honest because his mom wants to meet you. It's why he's there. He wants to take you back to Texas to meet his family and, more importantly, me. Isn't that romantic? Is this true? Yes, I talked to David, your boss, and... What? And, look, I, I managed to convince him to give you two extra weeks of holiday pay. To do what? To obviously meet my family back in the States. Uh, he made some shit up about you needing to learn from your sister company if you're going to make the company run better. You know, blah, 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 made up bullshit, you say, when you really like someone very special to you. And this David bought that lunacy? Ugh, yeah, he'd do that. So, when do we leave? We have a flight in 24 hours, and in the meanwhile, I think I owe you a trip to the London Eye. Don't I? That you do. Oh, come in. Let me get dressed and we'll go. Oh, I'm so glad you two worked it out. But I feel you should know a few facts about Texas, uh, please. If you value yourself, don't come here. It's a fucked up place. I mean, why else is Mark pushing to leave here for you, Scarlet? He's right. And that's why you're the definition of how fucked up Texas is. <laughs> you do sound like a mess, Dan. <laughs> okay, I didn't make this call to be insulted. I'll go for now. Have I told you about his love for Adele? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even listen to her, and I'm a girl. You two really belong together. Could you sing us some of her songs? No. Goodbye. Oh, come on, please. I'm sure I won't hate it. Please? Fine. Just don't laugh. We could have had... <laughs> I love that man. <laughs> Can I keep him in my life? <laughs> I was thinking of ending it with him. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, I'll choose him in the divorce.
What colour do you want it? I was thinking plain white. Oh, boring. How about pink? Ooh, that sounds interesting. But how about no? Because I'm not a girl. <laughs> well, I guess you have the knack for wearing girly clothes for nothing, then. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> that's right. I'm bringing the fire. <laughs> no, come back. What's going on? Nothing. Everything is fine. So, did you have to go to a particular school to be as immature as you're being?、Uh, that's the fifth time you've hung up.、Uh, let's focus on your character. Did you have a mentor for teaching you your skills? Stop changing the subject. Talk to me. Look, Rach, it's nothing. Leave it. Are you a drug dealer? Oh no, you're. That guy from um, uh, uh, Breaking Bad? No, I'm not, and he's fictional. Oh, you do have a similar look to him,、oh, despite me never having watched the show. You just keep on astonishing me, don't you? I'll sleep with a knife under my pillow from now on. I think. <laughs> Stop it, Rachel. Well, I will when you tell me what's going on. My dad's trying to get in touch with me, and that makes it a bad thing because he's more tragic than you. There's only one tragic person in this room, and she looks like she wants to wring my neck. So I'll shut up. Well, what's your dad done for you to hate him? I don't know you well enough to. What's so bad about him wanting to get in touch? Isn't it a good thing he wants to know his son? Most kids would love to know their fathers. Count your blessings. It would be a good thing if he bothered to do it when I was a child. Well, if you were as horrible as you are right now in your speech pattern, I'd understand why he didn't bother with you. He was a drunk, and not a nice one. Wait, there's a way that you can be a friendly drunk. Why the hell am I only knowing that now? Let's get me drunk. I've lived through a hellish childhood, and I have every right not to talk to him. He's a dick. Oh, that's your right to think that. But you're smart. You have to hold a balanced opinion. Wait. Did I say? Say I was smart. Yes. No take backs. Ugh! Damn it. Give your dad a chance. I've done that my whole life. There's a limit of chances I'll give someone. Well, how did you lose touch? My mum divorced him, and ever since I've been ignoring him. I mean this in the most excellent way possible, but you, my love, are a. A lot of people say that about me when they hear this story. Hmm. Look. You have every right to ignore him, despite however stupid you are. My childhood was a pain, Rachel, and I can't forgive him. I won't. Sure, but it's in the past. You're focused so much on the history that you haven't seen what a new future could look like. Maybe your dad's changed, and a bright future awaits you. Or maybe he's still the dick that he was. You have two sisters, right? Have they made up with him? Yeah, they say he's religious now. Well, there you go. He's even more than a dick than you are right now. I can't risk getting hurt again. Maybe you won't. But what I do know is, if you don't try to patch things up with him, you might regret it. Do it. Yeah, maybe you're right. You're still not convinced, are you? Oh hell no. <sighs> hey, I was thinking Mexican food tonight. And here I thought I wanted to spend as much time away from you as possible. I would say something rude back, but as I can only count my loyal pals with one hand, I haven't got the luxury of losing you. Did you hear what happened to Craig? So he's bopping in the kitchen, 
you know, trying to act all cool for Nancy, and then bang, he fell over like a dick. <laughs> yeah, heard it and then laughed out loud in his face. And he cried. <laughs> Poor bastard. Okay, I don't know why you did that, but as long as it made him not want to show off again, I'm pleased with your actions. Can you tell me one embarrassing thing your dad did during your childhood? Why? So you can spend a lifetime making fun of me? Wait, you think I'd spend a lifetime with you? By the time I hit my forties, I'll be on divorce number five. And you'll be in the ground six feet under after I've murdered you for your acting money. Well, at least that's the hope, anyway. Great. Thanks. My dad slept with my teacher during my parents' evenings. Oh. Was she fit? Because if she was, then you've got nothing to be embarrassed about. He? He was a he. And why did I have to tell you that? I'm not going to make fun of you. Not at this minute, but you will in the future. Mm, you've guessed correctly. I got bullied pretty badly through high school. I had no friends, no girlfriends, nothing because of my dad. Well, that explains why you're trying so hard now with your acting career. I can't forgive him, Rachel. Take his call. Life's about forgiving. We all make mistakes. I mean, why else would I be scraping down the barrel trying to be your friend? Why, God, why? <laughs> You're not helping me. Sometimes mistakes are what makes us who we are. Your dad made you. It's time to forgive him. I don't think I should. We all deserve a second chance. Um, that's true. My first impression of you was you were seriously damaged up there. Then I got to know you and... Your opinion has changed. I knew it. It hasn't. Sorry, hun. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> Talk to him. For me? And <laughs> Why would I do something for you? Oh, please. You want me? <laughs> hmm, interesting. And here I thought my hatred for you was clear to see. Take the call. What are the upsides? Uh, you get to heal and become something I hope that's different from what you are now. What if he hasn't changed? Then you have a valid reason never to see him again. But you need an exact cause. Yeah, you're right. Ah, uh, I know. I'd rather you kiss my lips. Yeah, I'm not there yet. Just as well. I had tuna for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. What'll you do? I'll take the call. I'll leave you to him. No. I want you to stay. And that I will. I must remember never to eat tuna again. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dad. Yeah, it's good to hear your voice, too. Yeah, I missed you, too. Thank you. You're welcome.
And that's this week's show. Please check the show notes for links for all of our shows this week at sonicsociety.org. Please see us next Sunday as David and I peel with laughter and enjoyment. Uh, Benjamin Peel, that is. Ah, That's right. Have a great day, everyone. (laughs) Bye for now. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production.